Hello, hello, Assalamualaikum. Ji ano, pakhair agale ni hamaj hu nishum mein wash bale o hai ganzai mas hai hugs and hellos to all those beautiful, amazing people who are tuning into BT World and are watching World this morning. Alongside me, Shazad, and my co-host, Maha Maktoum. Hello, Maha. How are you? Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Good morning. I'm very Malaykum. good. Hello, everyone. Welcome, as Shazad said. How are you today, Shazad? I'm absolutely perfect. It's just that I got a bit late for work, just because of the fact that my mother couldn't wake up today. So, and she's the one. Who she's the alarm up. clock of the house. Yeah, yeah. She she's the one who actually wakes me up as well. So couldn't do it. And then you know I put my cell phone on charge last night, which I thought was charging, and it wasn't charging as well. So the cell phone was off. So the alarm didn't go. But then it's all right. I you still made, made it. it. I you still made, made it. it. I called my producer. I told him that you know I'm running late, but please make sure that you don't start the show without me. And he was like, "Okay, we we'll, we'll wait till 15 past nine." But yeah, I made Quite it. Past, Th yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Yes. No. No. So we have a very interesting show for you today. We're not mm -hmm. going to do too much chit chat now because we have a lot to cover, and we have a second half as well on Ramadan as well. So let's get the conversation started today. We're going to be talking about Surah Nur, and it's going to be about spirituality and the inner light and about sinning and all these things so we're gonna learn so much i'm so excited but we have been joined by yusuf raza who is our in-house uh student of the quran i think how are you i'm good alhamdulillah so thank you i'm very sure about it uh, you know <laughs> i really look forward to this segment every day like it's really and you get to learn great. so many new things which you want to practice in your daily life as well Inshallah. so half of the time whenever i'm doing something i might refer it to what you told us <laughs> you know, earlier today and then I'll be like, Maybe we okay, should continue don't do this. this, do that. <laughs> Maybe we should continue this post from Azan yeah. as well then. So it's all right, even if the people are going to see your cell phone that you moved from a tablet <laughs> to a cell phone now. It's okay, yeah. as long as it's just yeah. information. It's in my dad's car. That's <laughs> yeah, fine, as long as it's information and you're not messaging. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so we're going to talk about ayah number 35. Mm -hmm. It's a very famous ayah. A lot of people love to recite or hear it. Allahu nuru samawati wal ard. And this picks up from where we left off yesterday, where we were talking about how this, you know, we have this yearning from within our hearts and we're looking for this perfection everywhere and we get through our learning experience as we find out, you know, it's not working out. Mm. And uh, <laughs> going from one place to another, trying one thing to another, what's really going on? So the Quran talks about this in a very uh, symbolic fashion, like parables are given uh, in this particular ayah. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts this ayah, Allah nuru samawati wal ard. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. Uh, there are mysteries to the heavens and the earth. There are questions about existence, about the heavens and the earth themselves. And if you put God into the equation, if you uh, look at it from the Tawheed perspective of Allah, a lot of the things light up. So it is as though without that, you're stumbling in the dark. Okay. You're stumbling in the dark with no idea and all of that is just, you know, a uh, whole, uh, it's just confusion. It's just confusion, mm -hmm. right? So, Allahu nuru samawati wal ard, mathalu nurihi kamishkatin. The parable of his light is as if it was a niche. A niche is, uh, again, not a very commonly used word anymore. Well, I know what a niche is. What is it's it? like a speciality within the market. <laughs> That's a business yeah. term, isn't it? <laughs> so we're not talking about it in that context. Uh, traditionally, houses used to have, and they still do, uh, shelves within the walls. Okay. So there will be a hollow in the wall. Yeah. And so it has a base and it has a, a hollow. Well, the chimneys, right? Yeah. So um, you put lanterns in it and decoration okay. pieces and lanterns. We still have those, but you know, not as. Uh, it's outdated now. It's um, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So uh, they would have those hollow kind of structures in the wall with a base. And um, on that, they used to have their lanterns and everything. Kamishkatin fiha misbah. In the niche, in it, is a lamp. Mm -hmm. Is a lamp, right? Al misbahu fi zujaja. The lamp is in a glass. So there is a glass surrounding the lamp. The lamp is sitting on the, uh, the shelf in the, within the niche, right? So. Um, that's a parable for what you see within the human being, uh, the human heart. Okay. Sitting, in the uh, sitting on the diaphragm in the chest cavity is the human heart, right? Within that human heart, if you will, is that light. And the, oh, it's all symbolic, by the way. It doesn't, you know, we're yeah. not saying that. <laughs> not literal. <laughs> 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 we start emitting light just like Iron Man. As yes. Well. <laughs> heart transplant, yeah. a person goes from, the, yeah. the, 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 that's not what it is. Right, so the heart is uh, the, the, the glass outside and within the heart is the light. Mm -hmm. Within the heart is the light. So the ayah moves on. Al-misbahu fi zujaja, az-zujajatu ka'annaha kawkabun. The glass 
is as if it was a shining star. The glass is as if it was a shining star. It is lit from a blessed tree. It is an olive tree, neither of the east nor of the west. So what does all of this mean? Mm. What does all of this mean? Now, what this teaches us or what this is alluding towards is the inner uh, potential spiritual purity of every single human being. That everyone is spiritually empowered. Mm. And that spirituality does not, uh, it does not get diseased. It is pure. It and is it pure. is there. It's there. For every single human being, this purity is there. And that's what the Quran says. That's what the Quran says. And the, for example, the, the level of purity, the level of spirituality that was manifest by uh, the Messenger Wasallam, right? The, the level of purity manifested by Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, radiallahu ta'ala, anhum, all of them. All of them had this light within themselves. So how, how do we get it sabotaged by our actions? Exactly. Why, for example, if you talk about the seerah, why did Abu Jahl, did he not have this light within him? Yeah. What about Fir'aun? Did he not have this light within him? What about Hitler? Did he not have this light within him? Yeah. What became of this light for all of these people? Again, remember the light is the, the lamp within, right? Outside of it is a glass. glass. Uh, we see from other narrations and in other parts of the Quran that the glass has this tendency of getting dirty. And we're used to all these kinds of other lights that we have. The dirtier the, the, the glass around the light source, the more covered up it is. If you cover it up in black cloths and layers and layers of black cloth, it doesn't matter how powerful the bulb is within. Yeah. Mm. The light is not going to emanate forth. The mm. light is going to stay, it's going to stay with its own purity within. It's accessible. You got to take the cloth off or you got to remove the dark stains, right? So this is where we learn from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he says that whenever somebody sins, whenever we act irresponsibly, we exploit someone else, we forget an, forget an obligation that God has put on us, one way or the other that puts a dark spot on our hearts. Dark spot on our hearts. To the point that those dark spots keep on accumulating and the light gets completely covered up. And when the light gets completely covered up, then the, 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 the spirituality that has to emanate, that has to manifest itself is is completely blocked off, mm. is completely blocked off. So the Qur'an is recited and the Qur'an talks about, you know, responsibility and talks about all these obligations. They're like, what? Mm. Completely, uh, uh, completely uh, having no idea what it's talking about. Mm. Allah SWT, it's like the, the, the Qur'an stories, man. Mm. I know what the Qur'an is, like heaven, hell, stories, you know, all those you know, of mm. previous prophets. That's all there is to it. There's nothing more to it than that. And again, that's a very typical response that the Messenger Wasallam would get from the people of Quraysh. They would say, <laughs> Asatir al These are tales of the ancient people. It's not relevant to us. It's not important to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's comment on their comment of Asatir al they're labeling it as tales of the ancient is, Kalla bal rana ala qulubihim. It is rather that they have uh, rust on their hearts. Their hearts have rusted. Mm -hmm. They're not living up to their potential. They're not allowing for that light to shine forth. So then now okay, and then, sorry, yeah, yeah. there's another aspect as well where the, there's a veil that's put over your heart yeah. as well. Is this Again, yes. So uh, when the sinning part, when human of his, uh, human being of his own initiative continues to go on down that line, the yeah. extreme end of that is the heart is sealed. The oh heart gosh. is sealed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seals the heart, no more chances. You've mm. joked around with me enough. Oops. I've given you enough opportunities. So then there's no way back. At that point, yes. These are the people who say, Summon book mun um, 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 la yarjun. These are deaf, dime, deaf well, well, dumb, Which point blind. is that? Do, do we still have that point in this life? Uh, this, exactly. This is and, something and that happens before time? death. This is, this is supposed to happen so before what if, death. You know, okay, so it doesn't get sealed before you die. And there's no way for anyone else to... No, no, it doesn't... It, it, it's quite possible that it does. Get sealed it's before, before, before time the is time Before the time, yes. So it's... Oh, again, yeah. that's again something to be conscious and wary of. And, but there's no one... No one can make that judgment for you. No, but then this so then element. What if you think? So yeah, but, know, the, but then this nice. element within our religion as well that Allah is Rahim and everybody knows that as well, and then it's never too late to repent and ask for forgiveness. Unless you're on your deathbed. I mean, unless if your heart is not that rusty, right? Right. So the thing is, um, you would want the a rusted heart or a locked up heart would not repent. Oh. Repentance is a feature mm -hmm. of that light. The, the, it, it's that light that Allah, gives you the. Forgive me, Allah. Please forgive <laughs> you me. You can do the fate of Shazad. We'll talk about the fate. No, I was so. just checking whether the heart's rusty or not. It's not. <laughs>
<laughs> this doesn't prove anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, yes. Kalla bal rana ala qulubihim. Kalla innahum ar rabbihim yawma idhil la mahjubun. These people with these rusty hearts, with this light not shining forth, they are going to be, what's their manifestation on the Day of Judgment? They are going to be veiled from Allah on the Day of Judgment. Oh God. They will not be able to see God. God will not talk to them, not have a conversation with them, completely shut them out. And that's the Ar-Rahman who is dealing with them in that way. The most merciful Lord is dealing with them in that way. It's like when your parents get angry with you and you've done something wrong and they don't talk to you. That's Only this, this is uh, something that is Wait, yes. potentially irreversible. Gosh. Potentially irreversible. But then there might be a way out. I mean, you, you the just way can't out is be here. Like this. The way out is here. The way out has been the last few every day that we've been <laughs> having these. Like, yeah, I know. So it's all about what we talk about here. Over there, just regret. I wish I could go back. Mm. I w just God send me back again. Rabbana matanas nataini wa hiyatanas natain fahal ila khurujim min sabil. The people of the hellfire are going to be saying, Ya Allah, you'd give us death twice. You gave us life twice. How about we try it another time? Send us back. Let's give it another shot. And like, no, no way. No way. So now, if for those people who, in whom this light is allowed, their glass is clear, crystal clear, crystal clear. First up, let's actually talk about how to clear that glass up. Because yes. we are all right. rusty with our hearts, we're all dark with our hearts. The Messenger ﷺ was asked, uh, he's told the people this, that the hearts get rusted or hearts get, you know, uh, these dark blotches on them. Uh, the Sahaba asked, مَا جِلَاءُهَا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ What is the cure for that? What is, how do we get rid of it? Because if our, our swords and you know, our, uh, our uh, crockery or whatever it gets rusted, we, we have ways of getting rid of that. So how do we get rid of this rust? The Messenger وسلم, says, كَثْرَةُ ذِكْرِ الْمَوْتِ وَتِلَاوِتِ Quran. Frequent remembrance of death and recitation of the Quran. Now how does this work? Frequent remembrance of death makes you realize what? My vulnerabilities, my weakness, Especially the fact I don't have a lot of and time. And what can happen to me the next second as well. Exactly. I, I, I'm not sure. I need to, I don't know when the bell is going to ring and my time is over. Yeah. I have specific tasks to perform, responsibilities to fulfill, things that I need to find out, realizations that are, that are awaiting me. And I don't have an eternity to do it. Because really, death is what gives life meaning. If there is no death, then what, what's the meaning of life? Because then you just have an eternity to procrastinate. If you have a task that you have the next five years to do, the chances are until the next five years are up, the last day of the fifth year, that's when you're going to actually start doing it. Yep. Right? So if we have an eternity, we're never going to die, then fulfill what responsibility? Look for what meaning? Let me just chill, relax. Yeah. Mm. Right? So death is what gives life I mean, meaning. If you're immortal. Yeah, but that's not happening. Imagine. Right? So uh, again, uh, eternality or immortality is something that is earned within, and, and that's one thing of paradise that you have this eternal life yeah. that you earned through this mortal life, right? In any case, so that remembrance of death, because people, we become, uh, we like to become oblivious of the reality of death. Mm -hmm. As great as that reality is, we would like to think it's not going to happen. And one way of numbing ourselves to that reality is to watch more gory material on television, read about more death-related news, Again, the most scintillating, exciting news is what? What catches the most viewership? About death. Yeah. So many people died here. So many people died here. So many, so this happened there and so many people died here. The movies and all of these massacres that are being shown. So that means that we do have a fear of losing our lives. The thing is, we are desensitizing yeah. ourselves to it. By engaging in all of these forms where we are looking at death repeatedly, 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 yeah. somehow it gives us a sense that maybe, you know what, I'm not, that's not going to happen to me. Oh yeah, it's not going to happen to me like that anyway, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. Okay, so now, because um, we are running out of time for this segment, so going forward, how do we do this? Because some people do have that, they start numbing themselves, some people have a realization, so people who are having realizations, that's a good thing. So reading Quran. I'm trying yeah. to figure this out. The second, the second part is uh, Tilawatul Quran, recitation of Quran, yeah. which uh, makes you realize what your meaning is. Okay. What is it that you and have to do? And then remembrance of death. And remembrance of death. Those are the two things. And then when this light does shine forth, what is its maximum potential? Mm -hmm. Ibn al-Qayyim, one of the scholars, rahimahullah, he said that there are people mm -hmm. who read the Quran as if it, they're not reading it off the pages. Mm -hmm. Rather, they are reading it off their hearts. Uh -huh. That's how pure their hearts are. 
because the source of the Quran and source of that light is the same. Allahu Nuru Samawati wal Ard. The light of the heavens and the earth is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. There's another ayah in Surah Qaf. It would it narrates a few uh, reminders and then it says Inna fi dhalika la dhikra. In all of that is a reminder. Liman uh, liman kana lahu qalbun aw alqa sam'a wa huwa shahid. For the one who has a heart. And that would mean a living heart, a crystal clear heart from which that light is shining forth. Those people immediately take a reminder from the Quran. It resonates. Right. It resonates with them. The same frequency. Mm -hmm. So it resonates. But for the others, the whole, all hope is not last or lost. Mm -hmm. These people are careful, attentive. They get tired listening to it, but they still give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Right? They can't do it. The, they don't have the, 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 the stamina or the ability to go at it like the Messenger mm -hmm. would recite five, six juz. He would recite like three, four, five hours at length. Mm. Right, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu would finish uh, the Quran uh, sometimes in a night, sometimes in three nights. Wow. Right, that was the level of his attachment, and they would not get tired because the, for their the light is light is shining forth, crystal clear glass, crystal clear glass. Wow. So the more we clean it, the more we purify it, the easier it will become eventually to connect with the Quran to manifest our spirituality. But I think then at the right. same time we probably need to take a look into our daily actions or daily routines as well and if we try to manage them, I think the cleaning of the glass will be a bit more easier as yeah, well. Yeah, as long as you apply the teachings of yes, the Quran and sure. remember. And start reading Quran and then remembrance of death. Yep. Okay, great. Which will give you a reality. So, do have, well. have you concluded it? The ayah continues and says, Nurun uh, ala. For, for one thing, the, the Zaytun that's mentioned, light of the east nor of the west, reflects how this is universal. This is not restricted to one particular nation, one particular time. This is universal across every human being has this potential. Okay. The chance is not lost to anyone. Okay. No, not lost to anyone. Nurun ala nur. And it says that, uh, in another part it says that it, it lights up even though fire hasn't touched it. It's so brilliant. Mm. It's so like ready to burst. So pure. In, so pure, right? So uh, it's ready, but fire hasn't touched it and it's still it reaches so many conclusions. Once the fire or the light does come upon it, Nurun ala nur, light upon light. Okay. Quran upon this inner purity. That's it. Good. Wonderful. Great, thank you so much for that. That no was very no. interesting today. And I'm looking forward to tomorrow. So yes. guys, um, I hope you took something from that today. It was talking about spirituality, about how to clean our hearts and our souls and um, you know, stay on the right path. But uh, for the next segment, we have something very interesting. So do stay tuned. could possibly be considered as the glory of Multan. From whichever side the city is approached, the most prominent thing that can be seen from miles all around is a huge dome. This dome is the shrine. used are dark blue, azure and white, contrasted with the deep red of the finely polished
Pakistan's legends of music. An automobile mechanic by profession ended up becoming the greatest singing legend of Pakistan. Pakistan's singing pride, Ustad Mehdi Hassan Khan, known as the Shahenshai Ghazal, or the King of Ghazal, a former playback singer who captivated millions of music fans across South Asia. <laughs> His passion for Urdu poetry led him to start singing ghazals in 1962. Winner of the Pride of Performance Award, Tamgai Imtiaz, Hilale Imtiaz, Nishane Imtiaz, and 10 Nigar Awards for his contribution to the Pakistani film. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back and thank you very much for staying tuned. For everybody who just uh, tuned into PT World, you're watching World This Morning alongside Shazad and Maha and earlier, you know, our, uh, the very amazing segment, which is the teachings of Quran by yes. Yusuf Raza, and we just got done with it. And it is very essential for you to make sure that the glass is actually clear and then the light can be emitted out of your heart so that it can reach out to the eternal uh, creator. And yeah. uh, that's about it. And yeah. uh, please make sure that you know you look after the society around you as well, because a lot of these actions are going to reflect on your namayama on the day of judgment. Exactly. And to highlight people Beautiful. who, are, yeah, that's very nicely <laughs> done. And I'm going to ruin it now with the follow up. But anyway, no, there are people out there who are actually cleaning their glass and are doing some great work and helping people. And She's not on just yeah, for a second, yeah. and we have a lot to talk about today. So, um, you know, they're doing a lot of work and they have a lot to highlight, especially during Ramadan. They were with us pre-Ramadan to highlight what they would be doing the, the course of the month. And so now they're here to tell us what they've done because they've achieved quite a lot. I'm not going to give the figures and statistics. I do know one because it was on online yesterday. So they've reached a really big figure of how many aftaris that they have yeah. done. And uh, so, yeah, to discuss this, let's introduce our guests. So we have been joined joined by Haris bin Saqib. He is in charge of the Rawalpindi chapter for Feed the World. Assalamualaikum, good morning. Thank you for joining us. And uh, he's been feeding himself quite a lot as well. This <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, besides Haris, we've been joined by Amna Beg, who is the co-head of the Rawalpindi chapter of Feed the World. Assalamualaikum, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting us. Uh, besides Amna Beg, we've been joined by Fahad Shah, who is the volunteer <laughs> recruiter for Feed the World. Assalamualaikum, good morning. Assalamualaikum, good morning. recruiter looks like an army post, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, by f uh, bes besides Fahad Shah, we've been joined by Momina Ra Rashid. Rashid, who is the head of the social media. Assalamualaikum, Assalamu good morning. Besides Mormona, we've been joined by Rohail Sulman, who is also a volunteer at Feed the World. Assalamualaikum, good morning. Okay, guys, we have a lot to discuss. <coughs> so uh, we know who Feed the World are. I talk about you guys yeah. quite a lot. So tell us, what have you been doing this Ramazan? So we have been doing the iftar campaign in Ramzan for the past three years <laughs> in Islamabad, but we haven't started in Rahul Pindi. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we started a new campaign in Rahul Pindi and we look up the volunteers. Mm -hmm. Now what we did is we started together at Jinnah Park mm -hmm. and there's a lot of, we have a team of around 10 different volunteers. Mm -hmm. They used to come from different vicinities and they used to collect the meals from Jinnah Park mm -hmm. and then they go out to different outskirts of Rahul Pindi and go distribute the meal under the underprivileged community okay. of the 
Okay. Opening the year. So you start off with 10 volunteers this yeah. Ramadan. Okay, great. Because you've had this Lama chapter for uh, the last three years. How difficult was it, um, um, Natami, uh, for the Ravalpindi chapter? Because Ravalpindi is definitely it's a bigger definitely. city as well and the challenges are immense. Uh, so the reason that we shifted to Ravalpindi this year was because I myself shifted my house to Pindi. And then I realized, okay, okay so there are a lot of people who deserve more i think i personally believe there are more deserving people in rawalpindi so we mm. should have started uh, one campaign here as well i i believe it should have started last year but mm. because you know we didn't have anybody over here mm. so this year when we shifted we decided to start it haris is also rawalpindi based mm. i am rawalpindi based ruhail is rawalpindi based fahad is rawalpindi based so Great. that was quite easy mm. for us to gather because main volunteers we are the main volunteers so we gather there and then we have a big dedicated team as well mm -hmm. so it wasn't that difficult i believe it was quite easy okay, i mean having pindi boys all around you i think <laughs> it make it more easier exactly. as well but th that's a great initiative first of all congratulations on yes, coming up with so this much. idea that you guys have finally moved on to rubble pindi as well you've thought of it as well and then you're going to go on move on and they're in lahore other, as well other yes. cities yes. as well we will talk about lahore as well but uh let me ask fahad because she's i just mentioned you know you guys are from pindi and uh so how <laughs> I mean, as when you moved to Pindi, so how uh, difficult was it to get people on board? Because you start off with 10, because that's not that much for such a big city. Basically, what my job was, uh, intuitively, I try to compel the volunteers to come in mm. and uh, do stuff for people who deserve mm. a lot. Because mm. what I, uh, like, it seems for me, like, uh, as long as you are living, <coughs> your longing and wishings can never be end. Yeah. So the main thing, what I think is about <coughs> it, <coughs> is that... Um, you should mm. go for hunger mm. and hunger is the beautiful thing in uh, in our culture yeah right that okay. is the thing that's how you volunteer mm. yourself you sacrifice mm. and what you get is the wine okay that so you're doing it for the wine yes actually <laughs> and hunger as well <laughs> yeah. Yeah. okay yeah. great okay now um socially um uh, let me uh, Tell me, Momna, how diff I, I'm trying to find out the difficulties because Ravalpindi compared to Islamabad, Islamabad's very much, you know, systematically uh, broken up. I was thinking about it today because I saw all the cleaners. I think it's very easy to organize it, yeah. right? But Ravalpindi seems a lot more chaotic. So, socially, on social media, how did it help you to reach the figures that you guys are reaching? Because it's in the thousands. Right? Yes. Um, um well, uh, uh, the pictures we post um, of Rawal Pindi Sabah, they're combined. So yeah. basically, we don't show there's a difference between both okay. the cities. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. And so you've, if you found it quite easy to promote it online. Yes. Okay, wonderful. No, but before we further move on, I just want to come back to you and I want to ask that, you know, since you're a recruiter yourself, mm. so what is your motivational pitch? For example, if just I come over to you and I say that I want to work for Feed the World and I want to volunteer, what are you guys like, okay? That's yeah, it. obviously, because you're doing it for good. And yeah. what if I take the food because, you know, I have to come to Jinnah Park and take the food, take it back home, eat it with my friends. <laughs> how do you, well, how do you monitor it? You're not going to do that. I well, know that. obviously. But how do you monitor it? I can it? read your face. <laughs> <laughs> for for in, initial starters, what we, what we do is uh, we basically link them with a already an existing volunteer. Mm -hmm. What we do is uh, if someone is father is going to scheme three, mm -hmm. then for the new starter, we ask him to join him for mm -hmm. one to the two days. And if he's Shadow. more dedicated and he's showing up on a regular basis, then mm -hmm. we know he's there for a cause. Then okay. we have well, all the reasons. Call the friends and, friends and friends and friends then. Okay. Yeah, so so his know. hard work might take over Fahad's ambitions as well, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Secondly, yeah. the, uh, the kind of issues you were talking about. So in Rawal Pindi, you know, we, we initially faced a difficult time in finding the volunteers yeah. because we all are from Islamabad. I have studied in Nas, Amna was in Nas. So we are linked in Islamabad and we have the mm -hmm. whole community from Islamabad. But in Rawal Pindi, initially, apart from the core team, mm -hmm. we didn't have as many volunteers as what we needed. So we had a small problem, but okay. now people are showing up. So and tell us, yeah. that's, what I, that's what I'm trying to highlight from this. How are people showing up now? How have you used social media? Have you used that? What tools are you using? Because like we said, it's a big place. So from 10, how many people do you so have? So how now? are you doing this now? Yeah. Uh, social media is the one key mm. role. And then secondly is the personal word of mouth. Okay. We are using our personal contacts. We are using friends, friends of friends. So, so how many people are you <coughs> in Bindi now? Uh, uh, it averages between 18 to 22 now. Great, every day. So, so every day, yeah. yeah. So, so it's, it's much better now. As I said, uh, mm. it, in the start, it was a bit 
uh, fussy but you know over the time we have learned ourselves because mm -hmm. you know it was the first time for us in Pindi as well and then we could not gather at Jinnah Pass because there was a security issue mm -hmm. and then we had to overcome that as well okay. so it's a learning process for us because this is the first uh, first year in Pindi but inshallah it's going to go okay. well yeah, inshallah. Inshallah, definitely. Sir, <laughs> moving on to you now now finally that you know you guys have moved into Rawalpindi as well so which areas are you focusing on uh, because there's quite a lot of research which goes into it before handing over the food as well and mm -hmm. then it is quite a lot more difficult for Feed the World as well to expand in such a way where they're going to into different cities. No, like Maha said as well, it's much easier in Islamabad because it's segmented and you know where to go and G9, it's much G easier to move around. Around. Exactly, yeah. but in Pindi you don't really have specific areas. You have or you have a lot of specific areas that you need to go to. Mm -hmm. And that's why the system is a little different because in Islamabad you have two or three designated places and you distribute food over there. Over here you have one place where everybody comes, they gather their food mm -hmm. and then they just take it over to wherever they want to take it. Okay. So somebody who's from Scheme 3 will go to Scheme 3 and the joining areas mm -hmm. and he'll distribute it there. Somebody who's from Westridge will get the food from where it's supposed to be collected and go to Westridge and the adjoining areas and then distribute it over there. So that, that way it's more evenly spaced out throughout the city. Okay, and there's no like, you know, discrimination or favorite spots, so it's no. all equal. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. We are generally on the move. They say, okay. For instance, Amna is covering DHA area, DHA1 area, so she's on the move. She will see around, if she if she's anyone which is who is deserving, so she will stop the car and give it away. Mm -hmm. Then me and Fahad usually do the, the distribution we together. together, so we okay. move around almost three to four different areas of all Pindi. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, so, so now let's um, let's talk about the figures that you guys have been achieving. Because yeah. last year <coughs> you hit, hit a certain amount, this year you you almost reaching this record. I think this year it's like a total of 125,000 yeah. years given away and within Ramazan only it is 45,000 yes. which truly deserves a yeah, big round of applause Yeah, absolutely. You guys well. are doing great. Uh, you guys yes. are doing great. Uh, just, uh, just to basically <coughs> break your bit, 125,000 is the total count we have done till yes. now. And in, in for this Ramzan till the 21st Ramzan till yesterday, we have distributed 45,000 meals yes. That's through in different Including Lahore. <laughs> no, no, we didn't. No, no, you didn't. You said 125. Till date. Oh, I didn't hear that. We didn't hear that till date, Shazad. <laughs> Speak clearly. Right. Maha's on a different level today, guys. Yeah, because I'm awake. You're asleep. Awake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, so that's... So 45,000 meals you guys have achieved as of yesterday, yes. which is fantastic. So what are your what is your final aim? Because you have another six days after today. So, so or, or two. Seven. Eight. Seven. Eight. Seven. Eight. 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 Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I'm talking about working days. Yeah, sorry. She's, <laughs> off, she's <laughs> off finally. Okay, so yeah, sorry. initial yeah. aim was to basically test the meals at 50,000 meals. 50, but now, alhamdulillah, the numbers are expanding. People are, we We're have fun. 60, inshallah. Uh, so We'll basically go for sixty thousand, yeah. inshallah. Yeah, yeah, okay. move on. Go and on. Uh, we have a team in Lahore. We have an established team in Rawalpindi as well. We have the funds, so we will touch sixty thousand or maybe sixty-five thousand because in Ramzan, last Ashra, the flow is at, at the peak. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so then are you guys just volunteering, or you guys are actually making? show that you know you put pull in some amount of money from your pockets as well or from your family members yeah. are you guys doing that as Who's well? uh, and personally on personal note whenever i start some campaign or something the first donation is from my side it depends okay the, yeah. so the f i start i usually take a step first step by counting in from st starting from myself right. mm. so same goes so for i guess for, uh, so how do you guys how have you been collecting the donations for this ramazan let me ask you abu i'm doing this social work and <laughs> i so need your money for that reason <laughs> i cannot tell you and Real? it's so cool no, it's something it, like this it, in ramzan it's That's much easier because people are giving zakat as well mm. and secondly there's this thing about that you have to feed a rozedar if mm. you miss a roza or mm. anything like that and it's much easier for people to for you to get money from people yeah. okay. in Ramzan. Otherwise as well, we have donations throughout the year, but in Ramzan, you ask your family members, they're already giving zakat you. If you're earning yourself like mm -hmm. we are now at this age, then you yourself are also giving money out. So whenever you go to somebody and ask them for a donation, wh what type of questions do they ask you? But uh, the thing is that we're past the stage where we really have to mm -hmm. ask people for donations because yes. people themselves are volunteering for do donations now okay. mm -hmm. since we've uh, managed to break through to that side where people actually recognize who we are and Marshall. what we do. Mm -hmm. So now we're not really in that stage where we go to people and ask. Uh, personally ask them about it. But if somebody Excellent. does ask you if there's something going on which they can contribute to, then mm -hmm. you can very easily pitch the idea of Feed the World and show them the work that you've been doing 
as well because it's been so well documented exactly. on social media. And so you guys, are, you guys are active all year round, though. You don't actually yes. just stop after Ramadan. You are working throughout. So now, post Ramadan, like what your last drive last week, um, and then post Ramadan, what do you <coughs> guys, what have you got planned for the Rawalpindi areas? Are you guys going to continue doing this work, or is it going to stop? Uh, we are planning to basically, uh, in, as in Islamabad, we are basically doing food uh, food distribution uh, once a week or mm. after every tw uh, twice a week. Mm. So we are planning to start in Rawalpindi as well because we have noted down the few areas mm -hmm. which are kind of a bit more deserving. So we will see how it goes. But initial aim is to basically f uh, get done with the Ramzan with the 60,000 meals. And then we have a Teach the World chapter as well. So we are planning <coughs> to start a Teach the World chapter in Rawalpindi as well. Okay, okay but then what about Eid as well? Because you know, a lot of oh, we have yes. seen a lot of people on Eid days wandering around here and there. They might not even have clothes to wear or probably chappas as well and not even have food. And you know, we do have a beautiful concept of Fitrana as well over exactly. here in our religion. But I don't know where, where that Fitran there, is going these days. There, there's a volunteer within our team, Khawar. So he suggested an idea two days back that we should pre prepare some Eid gifts for the underprivileged community. We can go to some orphanage or something like that. So we are planning to basically start uh, making uh, goodie bags for kids uh, awesome. for uh, for both uh, under the age of 12, uh, 12 age. So each packet will contain some crisps, snacks. Uh, uh, bangles and many for females well. and yeah. yeah join us that will be great sure. <laughs> yeah, to yeah, after collecting my ED I will definitely <laughs> join you <laughs> That's and then I will be like okay now I can give a bit of ED as well okay, but great. now for all of you to be a part of Feed the World how was the journey so far and then what made you do this you know let's start from there yeah let's start from there I've been friends with Hassan since we were like uh, four or five wearing diapers yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, Sorry, right. you can say that. So when he started this out, I and he approached me. Obviously, he was like, "I'm going to start doing this." So and he obviously needed a lot of help doing that as well in setting up. And I helped him up in the initial days when I could. But then, since I was studying in Lahore, I went back and I couldn't work with him year round. But every Ramzan, when we did come back and when when we were here, we worked together. We built it up, and it was something that just with time. I started investing more time, more money into it as well and now I'm at the stage where he doesn't really have to ask me to come volunteer because I'm doing it myself. So it's just become part of the routine. And then what type of satisfaction do you get out of it? It's hard to explain what kind of satisfaction it is. It's just you, when you actually go out to give that food to people and you see how much it's needed, how much those people need it, it's, it's both sad and it's, it makes you a little happy at the same time as well that there's a little bit you can do to make those people So it's happy. like opening a white box but there's a Zinger burger in it instead. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's the happiest thing that can happen. Very nice. <laughs> Momina. Um, I've known Hassan for quite some time now but I joined him last year and since we weren't that active in social media mm. so me and my friend we were the only female <coughs> volunteers last year. Mm. So that is how we <coughs> got involved because there are a few words, female words. Mm that aren't covered okay. when there aren't females because females aren't comfortable with men going inside and okay. distributing food. Okay, fair enough. So that is how we got involved and then we pushed in the idea to you know make an Instagram or Snapchat and Twitter account. And they're doing really well like they're constantly being updated. Um, okay and how do you <coughs> feel once you've you know volunteered and you've given these ladies you know the food for the day? And when you know that the hits are coming and they're increasing. <laughs> yeah, and also on the social <laughs> aspect. Yeah. It feels great, but one feeling <coughs> that uh, that like literally overpowers you is that you are thankful to Allah because mm -hmm. you see those people they can't afford good uh, medical mm -hmm. treatments, and then one feeling that you get is you're thankful, and then you feel great that you know mm -hmm. you're being rewarded by Allah. So that are mm -hmm. two main feelings that we feel. Okay, great. How about you? I used to call Hassan. <coughs> Where are you in? He used to tell me I'm in SOS village doing this and doing doing that so I was thinking I, I called us and I'm coming over it was like okay come I saw him helping people and I was like I should do the same thing okay so that keeps me satisfied from the inside okay so that's what so I if Hassan was probably jumping into a well you'd be like, <laughs> that's okay. not a good thing that wasn't that's a good thing that's why I didn't do it but it was your own choice obviously obviously 
inspiration. Yeah, great. How about you? Uh, everybody is talking about Hassan, and I don't know if you we have introduced him and that who he is. Yeah, yeah, we have done. That. We've done like three yeah, shows with Feed the World. I don't know who Hassan is. So, okay. <laughs> So, uh, Haris and I, we went to the same university and we used to be part of this community service club that university had and we used to uh, do a lot of uh, things for the you know community back then. But then after university, after we graduated, we did not have a platform, mm -hmm. even though we were helping people, but there was no platform, there, that there was no routine, right? And mm -hmm. then uh, we heard about Hassan through a friend and we saw his work and Alhamdulillah, I felt that, you know, the, this is the best thing that we I have seen in terms of community service in Islamabad mm. because I've been living here all my life and you know uh, anyways that's how we uh, joined the bandwagon I would mm. say uh, so Haris and I uh, started it last year mm. with Hassan and this is our uh, second year amazing but okay. one last thing for you which is going to be different from all of these and that is your plans for the days to come before the world, obviously. Yeah. I mean, I know that you will <laughs> get married or you will get settled, yes. <laughs> Have babies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for the first question, mm -hmm. uh, as Amna mentioned, we have recently joined the uh, Feed the World team. And the purpose, I am doing it because there's a time in my life I was being, I was very ungrateful for the things I had in my life. Oh, so, and I lost a purpose at, as well. So, when I started to helping others, so, mm -hmm. I, I totally saw a new purpose in life and it gave me another purpose and new life. So Beautiful. whenever I go out there and I help someone, so it makes me happy and make me, it makes me alive. You've taken that's it away. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> okay, and now for the, like, let's just sp uh, spell it out what's happening in the coming days so that if there's anyone watching who would like to volunteer, okay. uh, to share all the information, where they can reach you, especially if they're based in Rawalpindi. Last uh, Sunday, we basically hosted a uh, Aftar for Police uh, Thanas across Islamabad. So we're planning to do host another iftar for police within the community of Rawalpindi as well on next Sunday. And apart from them, we are planning <coughs> we are planning to host different iftars as per the usual routine. And with that, I have mentioned we are planning to make goodie bags and planning to distribute before Eid yes. or maybe on the first day or second day of the Eid to go somewhere. Amazing that is. Eid. And your Facebook. page is on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. I think Momina can do yeah. that. Momina, your Facebook um, address. Yes, and it's Feed the World on Facebook. Mm. On Instagram, it's Feed the World PK. Okay. No, it's just, sorry. It's just Feed the World. On Snapchat, it's Feed the World PK. And Twitter, it's Feed the World PK. Okay, and we will share all of this on our webpage. And do you log on to our Facebook fan page? Which is with the name of World This Morning. Our Twitter page. World This Morning with RG. Our YouTube and Daily Mission page. World This Morning once again. And the repeat is at? 5 past midnight. And that's how cool we are. We do not have to put any other PKs or TKs in <laughs> okay. it. See, that's how you manage social media. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. Good, Good morning. morning.